Okay, this is gonna be our first one. It's called Barry Does. In this case, Barry Does Ribs. Lots of different kinds of ribs that you can buy in the store. Two kinds that I like in particular, I like St. Louis style and I like barbecue uh, back ribs, baby, baby backs. You know, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. Lots of people like ribs, yet they really don't know how to cook it. Now everybody's got their own little secrets as to how to do ribs. I've got mine. I like to use a dry rib rub. I've made it myself. I've taken a recipe that I saw that I liked and over the, the years I've created my own blend of like 14 or 15 ingredients for my own dry rib rub. I think it's really important and essential to a good barbecue pork uh, dinner. In this case, we are gonna first go through the processes as to how you do your dry rib rub, what you do. First thing to do is you take it out of the package and you dry it down. Take a paper towel, lay it down, put your ribs over and dry it off. It's important that if you're gonna do a dry rib rub, you have to have your pork dry before you even put it on the rub. In some cases, you're gonna to have to use a couple layers of, of paper towels just to get it dry everywhere. Really important that you get it dry everywhere. Okay. Here's our first rib. In many cases, you may need to clean it and get rid of the fat. A little extra fat, not too good. Try to get it as long as you can before you cook. In this case, I'm just taking it and getting rid of a couple of extra layers of, of fat. This is my dry rib rub. It's got sugar in it, it's got paprika, it's got all kinds of different kinds of spices. And it's something that I feel comfortable with. It's really important, I think, that you lay down your dry rib rub right in the very beginning. When you're cooking it, I like to go to the barbecue and I do my barbecue with the dry rib rub first for about 15, 20 minutes. Lay it down this way, crinkle it on, do it on both sides. I'm sure there are lots of dry rib rubs that are out there. They're probably good. Of course I like mine better. And you dry it and you rub it in. Make sure your hands are dry, otherwise it's not gonna be very, very dry. Do it on both sides. So once you get the first side, Turn it over to the second side. Please be sure that your, your ribs are dry when you do it. I like a little spice in my dry rib rub. I like to get a little zip into it. Because the barbecue sauce is gonna have some, some spice to it too. But that's the second phase. We gotta do it in, in the correct amount. I, I'll get my barbecue ready now and get it up to temperature. We'll move on to the next one. Okay, I cut it in half, makes it easier. I split it up on two sides so that I have my, my grill working on, on two different uh, heaters. It's important to, first of all, yes, okay. Yeah, I understand, you know, you gotta shut up. Okay, low budget operation. <laughs> okay, we got the ribs cut up into, into two different spots. I think where a lot of people make their mistakes is they, they put uh, barbecue sauce on their ribs as soon as they want to cook it. Wrong. Sugar caramelizes and turns black. It's really important that you, first of all, do your uh, spice, do your rub, and then you, you cook it for about 15 minutes, about six minutes aside, until it starts getting a little dark. And then we bake it. That's, the, that's my secret. Nice and hot now. Ready to go, I'll turn it in about seven minutes. Okay, about five, six minutes aside is the way I look at it. Let me turn it and we'll see if it's, in, if it's okay. That's just about right. Maybe another minute I could have done. I like it to be a little more, a little more uh, brown. 
on that side. Let's look at this side. This is just about right. Figure six to seven minutes aside front of these particular ribs. There's something about the smell of ribs on the barbecue. Just amazing. Let's take a look and see how we're doing. It's about another six, seven minutes. I think we're just about there. Just what I want. A little bit of black in that sear and it's smoking thick. Same thing both sides. Perfect. We're ready to go. Now it's time to bake. One of the secrets, one of my secrets about making what I would call perfect pork ribs is that you really need to bake it. And bake it for about an hour. I have my techniques, I'll get into that later. But it's always good to use a deep pan. I use this deep pan, use some heavy duty aluminum foil. Cover it in aluminum foil because you're going to get grease, you're going to get the, the, the drippings and everything down on there. It's the best to keep it away from the, the pan and we'll get to that next. Aluminum foil, ready to go in the pan. What I do after this, at this time is I cut up the ribs into separate ribs. Really important because then I'm going to slather uh, barbecue sauce all over it. Still pretty hot, so I got to be careful when I do this. Please use a sharp knife. Make it easy. I tend to like Kinder barbecue sauce, but I also like Sweet Baby Ray's sauce. I know some of you don't like it too spicy. I like to have a little bit of zip, so I would go with a regular Sweet Baby Ray's, regular barbecue sauce. And if you're happy and don't want it too spicy, then just use this for the time being. I like to put in a little extra hot stuff. And the Kinder uh, hot barbecue, you use a little bit sparingly, sparingly, and so it doesn't get too hot, but has a little bit of zip. That's the key. I suppose it's about a cup. I didn't measure it. I, I generally do it to taste. So I'll put in the hot stuff and be sure you mix it up. You get just a little bit more. So I get a little zip. Okay, that should be about it. Mix it up with your hands. It's okay. You won't be so close. Okay, be sure you bathe all of these ribs. Use your hands. It's usually best to do it that way with the sauce. Get a good lathering, slathering of, of sauce on it. Put it in the, put it in your tray when you want to heat it up. I generally cook about 350 degrees for roughly about an hour. I want the meat to be just so tender that it just falls off the bone. I think that's the secret that everybody's looking for. It fell right off the bone. It was wonderful. Yeah. There'll be times when you're gonna to wanna to baste this as it cooks because you wanna be sure everything is just right. I have my own little technique as to how I cook it. With something like this, I'm gonna cook it for about 20 or 30 minutes covered with aluminum foil on top because I really care about moisture content. And then the other 30 minutes that I'm gonna bake it, it's gonna be without the cover so that it dries out a little bit. I like to have the chew, I like to have the flavor profile so that it just falls off the bone and it's still relatively moist, but not too wet. Okay, 30 minutes is up. Oh, we got some steam. Just what we want, we want to actually steam it. See in here. See in there, I got a little bit of juice in there and, it, and it's really steamy. Just 
just what you want. Not for us. The next 30 minutes are going to be nice and easy. We're going to dry it out, but now we have to baste it. We get a final baste right now. We want this meat to fall off the bone. That's the whole idea of this. Get it nice and thick, put a little more extra spice on it, a little extra zip, it's fine. And then I'll probably do this twice. I'll probably take it out in 15 minutes again and, and baste it again because I want that sauce to be all over it. What's good about baking it is you don't get that, 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 that blackening thing that you would do if you were roasting it or putting it on an open flame. Putting it on an open flame just adds to the char. You want the flavor without the char. You've got this thing cooked up and it's gonna fall right off the bone. I love it. Okay, ready to put it back in. This time with it open. Same temperature, 350, another 30 minutes. I think we're gonna be ready. See in 30. Okay, we're ready. Now we've got, see? Now we've got the right amount of moisture. We've got some crunch or we've got some, some bite. Everything is cooked perfectly. A little final base. And I think we're ready to enjoy. Even my cat wants to have some ribs, but I'm not gonna give the cat any ribs because that's all he does is he wants more. Yeah, you can tell? All right, I've also cooked up some beans. I think beans and ribs really go well together. Yeah, and uh, I also did a little vegetable cauliflower with it. So I'll show you what it looks like when it's all plated, okay? And anyway, I think we're ready to go. And here we have it. We have a roasted cauliflower with turmeric, a special spice roasted cauliflower that I put with it. We have some beautiful baked beans, three ribs. This is a delight. Thanks for, for looking and listening.